I'm gonna show you how to add a Miramako chart in PowerPoint using the Engage add-in. So first you just wanna make sure that you've got the Engage tab selected, then click on Infographics, and you'll notice here the Miramako chart. If you select this and click Insert, it'll add the Miramako chart as well as the Miramako chart dialog window. So I'm gonna close this dialog window and I'm gonna select the Miramako chart and move it down a bit. So you'll notice that the Miramako chart um, is basically a combination of a 100% stack column chart married with a 100% stack bar chart. And so by combining these two charts, you create the Miramako chart. And um, over here in this example, you have three different revenue streams, uh, color-coded uh, blue for products, red for services, and then green for licensing. And so uh, I can see the total revenue by quarter here at the top, and um, I can see the breakdown um, by revenue and by percentage uh, for each one of these different uh, revenue streams. And so uh, visually, I can see that as well by the size of each rectangle. So I can see Q2 because it's wider than the other ones, than the other columns, uh, was the biggest uh, revenue earning quarter in the year for uh, this company. And I can also see that within that quarter, because um, products is also the biggest rectangle uh, within this column, I can also see that within this uh, quarter as well, uh, products was also um, the um, biggest uh, share of revenue uh, as compared to services and uh, licensing. So uh, what I will do now is I'll show you how to update this Miramako chart. So when you select on it, you'll notice these two gears appear. If you click on those gears, you'll notice the uh, dialog window reopen. Now to access the data, every single infographic here is tied to an Excel embedded worksheet. Uh, to access that worksheet, I can just click on the edit data button and that will open the uh, Excel worksheet. You'll notice that the format is very similar to what you see in the Miramako chart. Um, so you have the different revenue streams, in this case, uh, product services licensing in the uh, first column. And then uh, in the first row, you'll see going, working our way across Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, we have the uh, column headers. So as long as I maintain this layout, I can add as many columns of information and as many rows of information uh, as I want. And uh, as long as I maintain the name of uh, this worksheet, um, I can go ahead and, and, and make as many changes here and add as many rows and columns as I want. And so for example, you see here there was no, there was no services revenue here for Q4. And then in the spreadsheet here, you see uh, that mirrored as well, where there's no, um, there's no revenue here for uh, services in Q4. So if I want to go ahead and update this, I can add another column and I'll call it Q1. And what I'll do is I will just um, grab uh, the same numbers that was in Q4 and I'll copy that over in Q1. And I'll just add another category called other. And to make things easier, I'll just uh, copy whatever I had in um, licensing revenue. I'll add, I'll put that for other. And uh, the one change I'll make is instead of $13,530, I'll make this $18,530. So when I've done, when I'm done making those uh, changes, I don't have to save the file. All I have to do is close the file because uh, it automatically embeds in my PowerPoint presentation. And so now you see it's updated my um, Merimako chart. And um, so the revenue we had in Q3 Four is the same as in Q1 for the following year. And um, the revenue from licensing is the same as for the other category. The only difference here is we updated from the 13,530 to 18,530. So it reflects that change. Um, so the other changes I wanna make here is for the other category, I'll just change the color to a gray. So it has its own unique color. And um, a couple other options. Um, that you, we can do here, um, you'll notice that the products uh, 
gets repeated, the interior label gets repeated uh, across the color, uh, across the same color set, and it's uh, not necessary because it's always the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, not show the interior labels, and because I have, because I'm showing the interior percentage here, I can uncheck this if I didn't wanna show the interior percentage breakdown, but I, I do wanna show it. What I will get rid of is the show Y axes, so I'll get rid of that because I'm already showing the interior percentage. Uh, and instead of what I'll do is I'll do show left labels. So um, the labels for product, services, licensing, other, I'll just show them once um, here on the left side. Um, what I'll do as well for the exterior font, I'll just um, make this a little bit bigger so it's just easier to uh, read. And uh, there's a couple other options. The interior font, I can also uh, increase the size and uh, change the color as well. So that'll make it easier to read as well. And um, I can show um, the borders or not. And in this case, the border color is, uh, is white, but if I had a darker color background slide, I could make them black to match the background color as well. So in this case, my background color is white, so I'll leave the border colors white. The other option I have is to show the column uh, subtotals. So in this case, I wanna show my column subtotals over here. I wanna show what my total revenue was uh, by quarter. Um, and then finally, uh, the last option I have here is to show the column percentages. So if I click on this, I can show that uh, Q1 here represent 21% of all revenue, Q2, 21%, Q3, 18%. Um, so I'll just turn that off because um, I don't want to show it. And um, what I want to show you now is a different version of a Merimago chart. So um, when you click on the Edit Data button, the other option you have is um, instead of making changes here and then closing, uh, I can actually go ahead and save this file. I can do a Save As and save it anywhere on my computer. I can make the changes uh, myself. I can email the file to somebody else and have them uh, enter the values and then they can send me back that file as long as they respect uh, the format here. Um, and so what I'm gonna do, and then um, you can just import that file directly without even having to open it. So that's um, what I've done. And so I've prepared a file to show you. So if you see this little triangle button here next to the edit data button, if you click on that, you'll notice import from Excel. So we're gonna build a completely different type of Merimako chart. And under here, I it opens a browse window. I'm gonna select uh, Merimako and I'm gonna click open. And so um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this. Uh, I'm just gonna click on the Merimako chart and I'm gonna align it to the grid. So I'm just gonna put it in the first uh, column. So if you click on the Smart Grid button, you'll see these different columns. Uh, so if you click on the object, you can just easily align it to the second column, the third column, and, and so on. But uh, in this case, I'm just gonna align to the first column. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger. I'm gonna make it a 12 column wide um, infographic. So uh, what I'm going to do here is when you look at this, it doesn't make much sense. Um, so what we have to do is we're going to change a lot of the colors here um, to bring attention to certain things, especially the top three values over here. So what you're looking at here is the total number of passenger vehicles sold um, for the top 10 countries um, and then for the rest of the countries worldwide. So if you click on this infographic and you click on these gears, uh, it'll reopen the dialog window. And what I wanna show you is the data, just so you get a sense of um, what we're working with. So this is uh, the same layout. So here, instead of having um, the different uh, types of uh, revenue streams, whether it was product, services, or licensing and whatnot, what we have here is we have the top 10 countries that sold the most cars in the world and then every other um, country that sold cars uh, in a category called other. And then across the top, instead of having Q1, Q2, Q3, we actually have uh, different continents or uh, groupings um, areas um, um, across the top. 
So, um, for example, uh, the United States uh, sold 7.7 .7 million passenger vehicles in 2014. And so that number belongs in column B, uh, North America. Um, so Brazil sold 2.5 million vehicles, passenger vehicles in 2014. And of course, it belongs in column E under Central and South America. Um, and so if I go back to my North America example, the United States was one of the top 10 uh, countries that sold the most cars worldwide. Uh, but unfortunately, Canada and uh, Mexico did not make the top 10. And so uh, they are lumped in this category called other. And so this is where you'll find uh, the uh, you'll find Canada and, and Mexico in terms of the number of passenger cars sold. Um, and the same goes for um, others cars sold in Central and South America, um, not um that did not make the the top 10 so for example chile and argentina would be uh would factor in this other category so if i close this file uh what i'm going to do now is i want to bring attention to the top three countries that sold the most cars so before i do that uh before i change the color here uh, up here, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. The first thing I need to do is, you'll notice that uh, my labels here, they don't make any sense anymore. The United States um, and other, um, it doesn't make uh, sense like it did for the other Merrimaco we just did. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm actually gonna um, turn off the show left labels. And instead, now I'm gonna show the interior labels. So this makes way more sense. Now I see for this value, this is the USA. Uh, for this one, this is China, uh, I see Japan. Uh, and instead, what I'm gonna do for the y-axis, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show that y-axis, and I'm gonna see that percentage breakdown. And because I've added this y-axis, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna show the interior percentage values. Um, this makes it cleaner, it gives me a bit more room, and um, you'll see why in a minute. Um, uh, because I'm going to use color to actually uh, focus um, the viewer's attention on, on uh, specific uh, numbers. And in this case, what I want to show is just how important the American, the Chinese, and specifically the Chinese, and the Japanese markets are, these top three uh, markets. So what I'm going to do is, for the other category, I'm going to start color coding these. I'm just going to make this a um, light gray. And uh, Italy does not fall in the top three. It's a top 10, um, but it's not a top three. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave blue for the top three and for the top 10 uh, countries, I'll just make it a dark gray. Um, so France again is a top 10, uh, Germany is a top 10, Russia is a top 10. Uh, the US is a top three, so I'll leave it blue. Brazil, top 10. Japan is top three, China is top three, um, South Africa is a top 10. So um, this is what the uh, Merrimaco looks like. What I might do is I might just make the interior font a little bit bigger just to bring more attention to uh, these countries. And um, in terms of um, the exterior font, I might keep it as is. And what I'll do is I'll just close this uh, dialog window. And you'll notice that um, for some of these countries, there's uh, not much room. So uh, especially here uh, for Africa here, what I might do is I can uh, adjust these uh, after the fact as well, because uh, all the infographics are created uh, using standard PowerPoint shapes. So I want to rotate this text. Um, it's still kind of hard to read, so what I might do is I might just um, delete some of these values. So I might not be able to fit uh, a dollar value, uh, sorry, a um, number of cars, a quantity value, um, but that's okay. It's, it's so small and I don't really want to bring people's attention there anyways, um, but I can make this a bit bigger. And again, if I want to, I can um, just go to home and then text direction here. I can um, rotate this. Um, so it buys me a bit more room. 
So, uh, and then for the other areas, I can, you know, play around with the data. The only thing you have to kind of be careful is um, whatever manual changes you make here after the fact, whenever you click on the Marimago chart and then you click on the gears to reopen this window, when it redraws, it'll just overwrite the changes that you made manually. Uh, but if you're not planning on it making any other changes, that's fine. Or if you can, try to make the changes using the uh, dialog window. So that is the Marimako chart.